eighth grade if you were in the nation of it. Okay? Now, here on letter A, the way it's different from substitution, substitution's nice. Um, but the thing is, with substitution, is neither equation set up for that? Is neither equation ready to go with having the variable by itself? No. Now, we can do substitution on this, but man, our lives would be not as easy necessarily to work with. We have to rearrange, get a variable by itself, and then what could happen here is we end up with a problem where we're working with some crappy fractions, and uh, that's just how much our life is more difficult than it needs to be. So then we have a backup plan, which is, again, elimination method, or what we also call a linear combination. So to do the elimination method, let's see, go down memory lane here, and see what you guys remember about that. All right, on elimination method, linear combination, don't write this down just yet. What we want to do then is linear combination says, hey, go straight down. Linear combination says add the x's together. Does the x's eliminate? What's negative 2 plus 4? Do those eliminate? No. Go straight down. Do the y's eliminate? What's 7 minus 2? Do those eliminate? No. So crap, that sucks. So we can't quite eliminate just yet. So what we have to do is force it so that we have to rewrite those equations some way, somehow, that either the x's or y's will eliminate. So what's gotta, what do we got to do to those coefficients such that they will eliminate? What do those coefficients need to be then? They need to be what? What's the magic word that we need to have as the number of negative and a so when we say that magic order we say it's opposites right they need to be opposites one another five and negative five ten and negative ten we need to have opposites up there we don't have opposites up there do we negative two and four are not opposites seven and negative two are not opposites that's why they won't eliminate at the moment so we got to make it opposite some way somehow so how do we do that we got to do some multiplication on those equations and make opposites happen all right, so we get a target. You got to pick out a variable to target to eliminate. It's totally your call. There's no right choice. There's no wrong choice. It's totally your call. Somebody pick the variable to eliminate. X or Y? X. Well, let's do that. All right, let's target the X's to eliminate. We have a negative 2 and a 4 to start off with. So when we want to target a variable to eliminate, to get that 2 and that 4, you got to ask yourself, well, what's the number that both 2 and 4 We'll both divide into nicely. I heard two. I heard a four. So let's pause. So will two divided by four? Will that does that divide nicely? No. Two divided by four is what? 0.5, right? That doesn't divide nicely. Then I heard somebody say a four, right? Four divided by four works, and four divided by two works, doesn't it? So what we want to do then is, it's essentially you're asking yourself, like adding fractions. We're finding basically like the common denominator. So we want to change those x's to come a force, a four and a negative four up there. All right, let's do that. That top equation needs to change, doesn't it? It's a negative two x. What times negative two gives me a four, two. We're going to multiply that top equation by 2. So we got to rewrite that top equation now. Multiply everything by 2, like your distributive property. Everything multiplies by 2. Let's rewrite that down below. 2 times negative 2x. Whoops, multiply. 2 times 7y. And 2 times 5. Now, do I need to do anything with that bottom equation? No, that bottom equation was nice. It's already a 4, isn't it? I want 4 and I want a negative 4. We now have that. So all I'm going to do then is take that bottom equation and just bring it on down. That bottom equation is good to go. I don't need to do anything with it. Don't touch it. Don't break it. Just bring it on down. Okay. So you're good to go now. Now we can combine these two equations. So let's do that. Okay. Now go ahead and let's combine these two equations so that the x's, as you told me, to eliminate. You said focus on the x's. That's what I'm doing. 
All right, add them up straight down. What's negative 4x plus 4x? Zero, right? They eliminate. How about the y's? What's 14y minus 2y? 12y. And what's 10 plus 14? And whenever you add these two equations together, it's going to be a very quick solve for the first variable. You're always going to divide by something. In this case, divide by 12. And y is... Just like with substitution, you get one variable, go find me the other one. I always encourage you to go back to the originals. Don't go back to the one we just created. Go back to the originals. Just use the smaller numbers to work with. Now, if you want to go back to the top one, bottom one, I don't care. It, it doesn't matter. Substitution, I always said go back to the one we substituted with. That one's usually quick to work with. With elimination, it doesn't matter here because um, you got to solve a little bit with this. So what do you want to do? Top and bottom. Bottom. bottom sure. Now, we just found y to be 2. So please, absolutely plug that in for y. And let's do some of our equation skills. And it will always, not always, but like 90% of the time, it's going to be a two-step equation you've got to solve. Okay? Add 4. Divide by 4, right? You can do that in your head. Add 4 is 18. Divide by 4. Now you go to your calculator, 18 divided by 4 turns out to be a nice decimal, right? Or reduce it by 2, which is 9 over 2, or 4.5, I believe. Either answer I would be fine with. 9 over 2 or 4.5, those are both nice numbers there. Write your answer again alphabetically as an ordered pair, 9 over 2 or comma. 4.5, 2, 5.3, 1. Alright, there's one down. Let's go do another one. Letter B, we're always on the hunt for opposite coefficients. Substitution method, we always want to look for an equation that has a variable by itself. So I don't have substitution method, so I'm on the hunt for opposite coefficients to start off with. Letter B, do I have opposite coefficients? No. So pick a variable, x or y's. Y, cool. What do we have in the Y's now? We have a 14 and a 7. So again, same question we keep asking you now. What is a number that both 14 and 7 divide into nicely? 14 does, right? So we want to take 7 into 14. We want to take 14 and four, that works out nicely. So we want to change these to 14s. Cool. Well, that top one, do we need to do anything with that top one? No. We got to do that. Yep, we got to do that bottom one, don't we? What times 7 gives you 14? So we got to multiply that bottom one by, yep, 2, don't we? Now, as we move, do that bottom one by 2, 2 times 4x, 2 times 7y, and 2 times negative 18 is. Now that top one you said was good. Don't touch it. Don't break it. Just slide it on down. And you said target the y's. We have opposite coefficients now. So now we can go ahead and add these two equations on together, can't we? Because these y's, when we add them up, we'll eliminate, won't they? 8 minus 3. Y's eliminate. And negative 36 minus 4 gives me negative 40. So I get negative 8. Okay, go back to the originals. I always encourage you to go back to the originals. And on the originals there, what do you want to do? Top or bottom? Top? Sure. I don't care. It's amazing how much I don't care. But make sure, whoops, make sure you plug in for x though, because that's what you just found. Negative 3 times negative 8. And use your equation skills to find out um, why. Okay. So it's a two stepper. Subtract 24. What is that? Negative 28. Divide by negative 14. And what do we get for y? So I'm going to get 2. Negative 8, comma, 2. 
Now we have a follow-up question there. That's my follow-up SAT for you. Again, that's what SAT likes to do sometimes. All right. They like to do that follow-up question of not just what is x and y, but what's the product of x and y. So what is what operation is product? So what is the multiplication of x and y? Negative 16. Correct. So again, that's that SAT component there that we keep talking about with you. Okay. You just did that on the homework a second ago when uh, Heaven asked about that SAT one that I gave you a bad problem on. The same thing right there. What's the value? I think it was 3x, right? The same thing right here. So if it's a bubble in or if it's a multiple choice, product, quotient, sum of x and y, those are all SAT style things we like to do. All right, let's go with letter C. Do we have opposite coefficients on letter C? Yes, no? No, nope, that sucks. All right, pick one. X or Y, we want to eliminate. Recall. I'm sorry? X? Cool. I don't care. Doesn't matter. There's no wrong choice. There's no bad choice. X. All right, what do we got on the X's? 7 and 3. What's the number of both 7 and 3 divided into nicely? 21. You got to change those to 21s. All right, on that top one, that top equation, what times 7 gives you 21? And on that bottom one, what times 3 gives you 21? So we have to multiply what both equations this time, don't we? No big deal. Who cares? Now, before I do it, though, what else do I have to do? One of these has to be negative. Now, I heard a negative 7. Does it matter if it's a 7 or a 3? No. Right, one of these has to be negative because I have to have opposite coefficients. A negative and a negative is not going to be opposite at the moment. So when you multiply here, either make the 3 negative or the 7 negative, and it doesn't matter which one. Now I heard negative 7, and I'm just going to go with that negative 7 there. That's cool. I don't care. Let's multiply by 3. And uh, what do we got? Negative 21x. Uh, what? 9y. And negative 9. What do we got there, Jake? Uh, you can look for it, boys. What's up, Jake? Hey, we had an appointment. Can we go okay? Yeah. All right. Grant, we're just doing notes, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, negative 7, guys. Bottom row, negative 7. So what do we got? Now, it's going to change my signs, right? 21x, 49y, and the last one is... Negative. Correct. That's the biggest thing I can tell you with that negative there. Watch those signs. Okay. All right. You told me to target those x's. We have the opposite coefficients. Now we should be good to go to eliminate those x's, right? All right. Straight down we go. X's eliminate. Cool. Y's are what? X. 58. And the constants on the right are... Yep, negative 58. Again, elimination people usually kind of like it because it's just now a quick divide. And what's y equals? Yep, negative 1. Again, I always go back to the originals. It's just smaller numbers to work with. And what do you want to use, the top one or bottom one? Sure, top. So remember, you got y to be negative 1. So negative 7x plus 3. Now y is negative 1. And it's again always going to be, not always, but like 90% of the time it's going to be a two-step equation. So um, 0. Now, it was the other days I had a few people in my classes saying, you can't do this, or there's a question about this. So you can divide by negative 7. What's 0 divided by anything? Okay. And a couple people maybe having a brain part. So what is it? Zero comma negative one. Okay. All right, let's go next door. Let's do one more here. Letter B. Do I have opposites to start off with? No, who cares? All right, what do you want to do? X or Y's? Y? Sure. All right, I heard Y's. Cool. 5 and 6, 5 and 6. What's the number to know that both 5 and 6 go into? Yeah, there's no small number, is there? 
Five and six have got to be 30. So we got to make those 30 Ys. All right, top equation then. What do we got to multiply that top equation by? And what's that bottom equation got to go by? All right. So let's go with that top equation by six. Seven times six. Seven times, sorry, nope, six times negative five. And six times negative two. All right. Calculator. Maybe, I don't know. Now what are we going to do? Multiply by. Okay. Now, I, somebody needs to just make sure we clarify here. I didn't multiply by negative yet. So I need to make sure, Grace, you said I need to multiply by negative five, right? If you do negative six up top, that's cool. But we need to make sure at some point we make one of those a negative. Now, wherever you put the negative, I don't care. Uh, well, 20, right? Negative 20. And then that's going to change me to a 30y. And this is where you might want that calculator or whatnot. Negative what? 120, I believe, right? There's my opposites on the uh, y's. You wanted me to eliminate the y's, and that's what happens. Straight on down we go. 42x minus 20x gives me 22x. Y is eliminate. And negative 12 minus 120 gives me negative 132. Divide by 22 and x equals negative what? Negative 6. All right. Go back to the originals. What you want to do, top or bottom? Top. You got x, cool. 7 times negative 6 minus 5y equals negative 2. Again, I always like going back to the originals just because the size of the numbers. And then it's a what? Add 42, uh, which is what? 40. And then divide by negative 5, which is a negative 3. So what do we have it at then? Negative 6 comma negative 8. And there is again my follow-up SAT question. When we say quotient of x and y, how do we write that? And what's the order of it? 6 over 8 or 8 over 6? Right, the order of x, y. So negative 6 <coughs> over negative 8. And what happens with that then? And it also does what? Always reduce fractions, correct. So the final answer we always want from you is 3 fourths. Okay? Right. Always reduce those things down. All right, let's do the last one there, guys. All right, letter E. First thing I'm always looking for is do I have opposites? Do I have opposite coefficients? Square address. Finally, we get a nice one, don't we? But if we didn't have a nice one, we know how to deal with it at this point now. And this is just like when we did rationalizing denominators uh, a couple months ago. Don't forget about looking for opposite coefficients. Don't forget about perfect squares. What do I mean by that? Some of you, way back when, I gave you guys the simple ones like this. Now, a few of you went ahead and rationalized the denominator, but I told you, hey, don't forget about the easy ones and you're done. Okay? Don't forget about right here where you already had what? Well, it's supposed to erase. Okay? Don't forget about right here, as Grace pointed out, the y's are opposites, so we can go straight to adding these together. And what do we got? 8x equals and then boom we're done with x aren't we x equals yep don't forget about opposite coefficients we didn't have to do anything there go back and find me the y top one or bottom one 2 times 2 plus 5y equals negative 5 that is a 4 
subtract that 4 and y equals negative 9 fifths I believe call it right there okay the only thing that's going to happen with elimination with you guys next year is they'll get a little bit uglier with fractions in there we clear out the fractions first and then you go back to eliminating and then they'll throw in some quadratics okay but you've got the ideas already all right we'll pause there tomorrow we'll do a little bit more work with that